Hello everybody, welcome back to Day to Day Chess. For today I've decided to introduce a new world chess champion, this time Max Ove, the fifth world chess champion in 1935 after beating Alexander Alekhin, that's the time he became the world champion. Two years later, however, he has um, lost the title back to Alexander Alekhin. Although people don't consider him one of the best uh, uh, world champions, he definitely had a big influence in chess. Uh, between 1970 and 1978, he actually was the president of the of FIDE, of the International Chess Federation. And uh, aside from being a world champion and a grandmaster, he was also a PhD. He had a PhD in math and he was an author. So he has done so much for the community. I think it's it's tough to say that because he wasn't world champion for such a long time, he didn't deserve it or something. I think he definitely was one um, of the best players in the world at that time and that's how um, he became a world champion Other otherwise you know you can't really become a world champion if uh, you're not there anyways a uh, great chess player this time I'm showing you uh, a game that I really enjoyed although he hasn't been uh, playing very well at the beginning of the game at least it doesn't seem that way he has found a really nice comeback and I think you're going to enjoy the end. So um, let me stop talking and start showing you the game. We have uh, an Italian, we haven't seen this for a while I think. And c3 these days, knight f6 is the main line here. Uh, knight f6 and white goes d4 because this is the idea of playing c3. We're not really um, very slow, it's not like this is also called gioco piano but okay, not super slow with d4 counter-attacking the center immediately. Now, black has to make this capture because it's attacking the bishop and the pawn back, but um, now bishop d4 and, okay, knight d7, for example, d5. This is basically the main line for black in this position. Yet, uh, Max Weber in 1948, when the game was played, he went for bishop b6 to kind of meet d4 with something else because now uh, you're not forced to capture. The bishop is not being attacked anymore. You can play whatever you want. Uh, d6 might be a possibility here, but I particularly don't think it's good because we can just take. And if we take back, um, simply uh, queen takes d8, knight takes d8 because, you know, f7 is hanging. And now white can take an e5. And I don't know if somebody enjoys playing with a pawn down, but um, anyways, I don't think d6 is a good good choice. Queen e7 is the move played by uh, Max Uyve also doesn't seem that great for black. That's why this line with bishop b6, I think, stopped being played, because here white could just play d5, get the center, advantage of the center and the space, and you have to go back on the starting position. Knight a5 would be a terrible idea, because your knight in a5 is going to be trapped there. After bishop d3, where are you bringing it? So uh, d5 definitely would have been an interesting choice for white. Instead, Tartakovar decided to finish his development. And now d6. Okay, now we're safe. Who our our um, uh, center is being well protected after d6. And h3 was Tartakovar's choice, possibly to avoid any bishop g4. In this position, however, uh, a4 is another possibility to threaten a5. And if you play a6, there are so many opportunities here uh, for y. But just having played a4, a6 is definitely. Um, a, a good idea for white um, here and there have been some a um, bunch of games played by white in this position with a4 so I must uh, say I'm not very familiar with this position but I think this is quite uh, quite a good position for white h3 is not bad either right it's just stopping bishop g4 just when you can get more space on the queen side and that being the part where normally you're going to be playing on especially that d5 is going to be played you might as well just try to do that. Uh, now both players are finishing their development. Now what you do about this knight in b1? Normally we are going knight d2, knight uh, f1, stuff like that in the Italian. But we're doing that when this pawn is in d3. Now with the pawn in d4, black has the opportunity of simply capturing and takes, you take back, bishop takes. Am I wrong or do I have a pawn up here with black? Of course, I have a pawn up in this position, and uh, white cannot afford to do that. So that's why in this position, if white doesn't play d5 fast enough, then should be finishing the development with 93. 
And now, um, my arrows point up to um, the idea that normally, if you see this position with black, you're thinking, well, my knight in c6 is really not doing that much. When black, white is going to play d5, the knight is going to have problems. Where am I going to bring it to d8, to b8? I can't develop my bishop in d7. This idea with moving the queen and having some knight e7, g6, this is something we would be thinking about. But um, still, where do you move the queen? Are you going back to d8? Come on, then what if I don't play d5? What are you going to do? Your queen is back on the starting position. So something else that we might be thinking of doing in this position is either maybe play some h6 here to just uh, avoid any bishop g5 stuff or, or take in d4. And I like this much more because now if you take... Okay, now I can maybe play h6 and um, your knight is not in b1 anymore to go to c3 immediately. Of course, you can still go knight b1 or knight b5 to go to c3 to control two central squares. Very good. But um, for the moment, it's not there. So uh, black can decide to play this position, for example. It's, it's the type of position that we might be thinking of playing if we have black. Yet, um, black didn't choose that. Max Erve chose a very interesting idea. That's why I'm saying he's such a creative player, I think. Um, because he went knight d8, and you're thinking, oh my god, the knight is going back, but it has some ideas. Bring it to e6, attack d4, and get ready to come to a, uh, towards f4. If at some point the position closes up, white's plan is going to be, according to the pawns, more space on the queen side, the play is going to be on the queen side, so black is going to prepare some f5 and then could have some knight f7 ideas to bring the knight into play. So it's not that bad of an idea and also is ready to meet any d5 with c6. Bishop f1 was uh, uh, Tartakovar's choice and the idea is of course to play knight c4 and this is kind of typical for this type of positions. Um, however, I would still have considered to play d5 here if I were white, to have my space and um, okay, of course, black can have some c3 breaking the position or with f5, but it takes some time and uh, I might be better off just playing d5. Bishop f1 is okay, though. And here, <laughs> you won't believe this next move. You'd still be thinking maybe capture, you know, or maybe h6. But no, um, Max Erve went for this interesting idea and you're not going to like it. Get ready. Knight e8. Yes, putting a sixth piece on the eighth rank. Um, can you believe he actually won this game? I couldn't. That's why I chose this game to show you this game because it shows so much creativity. Um, all the pieces are, are behind. I let you do whatever you want, but I will have my, uh, my comeback on the king side pretty soon. So, knight c4, very typical to come get the bishop. Um, f6. Because, of course, we cannot play knight e6, this pawn is hanging. So we have to play f6. And here, after this f6, a4 was played by white, a very good move. Threatening a5 to win the bishop. So we have to play c6 to save it. Now we're capturing the bishop, at least this is what Tartakovar did. Um, a good choice, I would say. Pawn takes, and here we see a little tactical idea. Oops. The king and the pawn are staying on some check pawn. And immediately Tartakovar utilized that to his advantage. Queen b3 check. But don't worry. It's not as bad. The knight comes into play towards f4. Um, we're losing this pawn in b6 indeed. But the position was quite passive. It didn't seem like black could do something. But now he actually has some ideas. He gave away a pawn on that side. But he has some attacking ideas with g5, preparing some g4, um, bringing the knight to f4 possibly, maybe h5, g4, why not? What to do? We have a pawn down, so we need to find some ways to counterattack. And this is exactly what uh, Max Oeve found. h6 with the idea king h7, h4. Well, here this part of the game was not played as great by Tartakovar, but if you're thinking about it, Psychologically, it's natural. The moves that he made are natural because you're thinking he's going to play g4. He's going to open up the g file. I don't want to get mated with white. I'm talking from white's perspective. I don't want to get mated. What to do? I mean, I'm going to play h4, try to make some trades. I'll play g3, king g2, bring the rook to h1, and then black won't have any attack. That seems natural. 
but sometimes it's better not to play on the side that you're being attacked. Sometimes it's better to play on the other side or in the center, and this is what Tartakover missed. He could have had some a4, a, uh, sorry, a4, a5, a6 ideas, open up, trade some pieces, move the play from the king side to the queen side. But it doesn't seem natural when you're playing. The computer, of course, would probably tell you this, but uh, when you're playing, you're just so worried. Oh my god, I'm going to be attacked. What to do? So here, after h4, um, uh, Max Uwe played king h7, opening up, of course, getting out of this pin and bringing the rook on the g file takes with which pawn do we take back the age of course we want the h file to be opened um, he opened up the center as well which seems natural um, and now bishop e3 and max Uwe is bringing his pieces to attack rook h8 now what do we do with the rook with the king in h7 of course the king needs to be moved to bring the queen to h7 threatening mates in h1 so of course why just place king g2 preventing King H, uh, Queen H7 because now we have Rook H1 and goodbye any attack, trades are happening and you'll never have anything with black. And in this particular position after King G2, Max Oeve found a brilliant move. Please make sure you pause the video and find it as well. Uh, I was thinking to play first Knight D6 with Tempo to kind of improve the position. You see those Six pieces on the board on the eighth rank are not there anymore, so you would think some knight d6 first. Now, if white would take, you simply take back and have a really nice position. You're done, finished your development. You have a pawn down, but you still have some attacking ideas. Um, with bishop h3, this bishop pawn is hanging. And uh, if knight d6, bishop d3 to defend this pawn, now we could make again the brilliant move of uh, Max Uwe. And that brilliant move, hopefully you had enough time to think about it, was... Knight f4. Check. <laughs> so I'm opening up my bishop. What do you do? Uh, Tartakover blundered here. He captured with a pawn. Big mistake opening up his king. This is something you should not be doing. Um, don't take the pieces of your opponent if you help him with the attack. Bishop takes a four had to be played. If check, you go back. If take, there's no direct threat anymore. Maybe you can play some bishop f1, trying to trade some pieces, you know. Um, keep your king safe. After g takes f4, you're going to see a brilliant finish here for black. Everything is going to happen with tempo from here on. And it's important because otherwise you just sacrifice the piece for nothing. Check. King g3. If king g1 would simply take and on the g file you're going to be mated. You don't have an escape there anymore. Check. You have to take. Now we don't take back. We need our queen to attack as well. And the weakness is G, the g4 square so we're playing queen d7 the only way for white to defend is knight h2 check we continue how can you bring a new piece into attack one more piece e4 is weak bishop g2 the only way to defend that as you can see the queen is is keeping this king from going anywhere and the knight is being attacked as well check one more check it's time to bring the queen to attack. Queen f5. Where do you go? I mean, you can go king d2 or king e3. You're going to lose this this uh, this bishop with check queen. Check. Check. One more piece is going out of the board. I took that as well. Now I don't worry anymore that I have a pawn down. In fact, I have two pieces for rook and a pawn. b3. Check. Now c2 is the problem. Bringing the queen to, to d3. Uh, White gave a little check, but there's nothing, like, it's just one check. Queen c7 here wouldn't help much because we just play king e6. And no more checks, whereas I still have my threat. Rook ac1 was Tartakovar's response, and here find this beautiful finish. Check, king a3. Beautiful finish, pause the video. Knight c4 check. Another beautiful move here. Check, king before everything was with tempo. No time for white to do anything in this position. White resigned because if you go here, there's mate. And if you go to c5, we have queen takes f2 check, losing the queen, skewering basically the queen. I hope you enjoyed this game. Stay tuned for more. 
tomorrow and the next week. Bye.